Hello, I'm William Devine. I'm the Senior Technical Support Representative here at the Whitmix Corporation. Today I'd like to discuss replacement of the toggle switch, the micro switch or automatic switch, and the nylon gear in the combination unit in the Power Mixer Plus. To accomplish this, we'll need the following tools. A 3 seconds Allen tool, a 1 quarter inch socket wrench, a ring expanding tool, a crescent wrench, needle nose pliers, a flat head screwdriver or Phillips head depending on the age of the unit, and a channel lock pair of pliers. Also, we'll need a new nylon gear with retaining ring, a regular toggle switch, dual pole or single pole depending on the age of the unit, and a micro switch. We're going to replace all of these units today. To begin our replacement procedure, we're going to need to do a few things. First, we'll need to remove the oil jar, wiping off any excess oil that's left behind. Two, we're going to need to unplug the unit. And then, three, we're going to need to remove the unit from its mounting stand or wall bracket, depending on how it's uh, set up in the lab. With the unit now on its laying on its back, with the uh, bracket on the table, I'm going to scribe a line between the motor shaft and the lower housing. This will allow us to orient the lower housing with the motor for proper placement when we're reattaching it. The next step is to take the Allen tool and remove the friction drive chuck in the rear of the unit. leaving the set screw in the drive chuck and set the chuck aside. Next we will loosen the set screw just above the toggle switch in the lower housing. All we need to do is back that set screw out. It doesn't need to be completely removed. Now with the set screw over the toggle switch completely loosened and backed out, it's time to grab our socket set and remove the quarter inch uh, socket bolts that go all the way through the motor down into the lower housing. It's important to note that I've completely loosened the four through bolts, but I have not completely taken them out of the motor. Taking them out of the motor uh, will result in it being a lot harder to reinsert them later when we reinstall the lower housing. So just loosening the bolts is sufficient for the procedures we're going to be accomplishing today. Now that the bolts are loosened, we should be able to remove the lower housing gently, taking care not to pull any wires loose from the lower motor housing. Now with the lower housing removed from the motor, we can access the micro switch, the toggle switch, and the nylon gear. And we want to make sure that all the wires are still attached to the actual bottom of the motor itself. If they are, we're ready to accomplish our switch replacement procedure. The first step will be to locate the two, two flathead screws that hold the bracket for the micro switch on and remove those so we can access the switches and the nylon gear. Now that the bracket's removed and the micro switch is free, we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, toggle switch. The first step is, by hand, you should be able to unscrew the knurled ring that fits over the outside of the toggle switch. For the hex nut, we're going to actually need the crescent wrench to loosen this portion. It's important to note with the removal of the toggle switch, the off position of the switch is facing towards the vibrator arm. You can see this on the plate as well as on the switch itself. 
The first switch to be replaced will be the micro switch or the automatic switch. And it's a good idea to actually hold the new switch up against the old switch so we have the proper orientation. This will aid in replacing the wires one wire at a time, which is how we're going to accomplish this. But the first step will be to remove the old micro switch from the mounting bracket. This can be accomplished by removing the screws that are actually holding the old micro switch in place onto the mounting bracket. Now that we've completely removed the old micro switch from the mounting bracket, we're ready to bring the mounting bracket over to the new switch, ensuring the proper orientation and mount it to the bracket. The next step will be to remove the wires one by one from the old switch, attaching them to the new switch mounted to the bracket. Ensuring the proper orientation. Now that we've replaced each wire one by one, we're ready to move on to the toggle switch wire replacement. And just like with the micro switch, we want to ensure that we've got the correct orientation of the new switch with the old switch, so we correctly place the wires. I'll begin by removing the wires one by one and replacing them and putting them on the new switch one by one. For this, you'll need a flathead screwdriver. All the wires have been reattached to the new switch. We've kept the bracket, set it aside, and put it in the proper orientation before we reinsert the switch. At this point, it's probably a good time to go ahead, now that we have access to the lower housing, and we're going to go ahead and replace the nylon gear. Before replacement with the new nylon gear, we'll need to remove the old nylon gear. We'll need the ring expanding tool to remove the ring that actually holds it in place. Simply insert the tool into the ring, squeeze down, it will expand the ring, and you should be able to remove it. With the retaining ring removed from the grooved uh, holder, we can go ahead and remove the nylon gear off of the shaft. It should slide right off. It's important to note the collar on the nylon gear has two different sizes. One is taller than the other. The taller column actually goes down towards the bottom of the motor shaft. Next it's time to affix the retaining ring on the shaft. This may be a bit difficult so it may take a little working to get it right in the groove because there is a groove around the shaft that this ring actually sits in. Insert the ring expanding tool in the two holes, hold it over the shaft, and expand the ring out while gently pushing down, trying to find the groove. Now with the nylon gear in place and the switch is installed, it's ready to reassemble our unit. The first step will be installing the toggle switch. Ensure that the L bracket 
the flat part is facing downward at the bottom of the switch before it is inserted into the lower housing. Like so. Now that I've ensured that the toggle switch is in the off position and facing towards the vibrator arm, I'm going to take the indicator plate and take the corresponding off indication and put it in the off position of the switch. The next step is to take the hex nut and secure that in place, first by hand and then we will use a wrench. Now that the hex nut is tightened into place and the switch is in the off position, it's time to secure the switch with the knurled ring. This can be hand tightened. The next step is to reattach our automatic switch or micro switch. Note the actuator plate. This is what actually engages the micro switch when the unit is in the off position and the pin is depressed through the nylon gear. So it's important that this is facing downward. That will put us in the proper orientation to secure the bracket to the lower housing as you can see. We'll go ahead and secure that now with the screws that we removed earlier. Now that the switches are in place, it's time to put the lower housing onto the lower unit. But before we do that, we want to ensure that the micro switch will engage when a mixing bowl is put into the front drive chuck. To do that, we will take an ordinary slotted drive mixing unit, place it into the front drive chuck, and test to see if we hear the clicking sound of the micro switch, as you can see and hear. Now it's time to secure the lower housing to the motor. To do that, we will use the orientation marks we made earlier on the lower housing and the motor shaft itself. Taking care to insert the motor shaft next to the nylon gear, gently place the lower housing into position. Now that the lower housing is in place, it's time to secure the motor through bolts. We can go ahead and hand tighten all four of them first to make sure that they're in the proper position. Alternating between each bolt. Now that we've hand tightened, I'm securing the four motor through bolts with a quarter inch socket wrench. Next, it's time to turn the unit on to ensure proper operation. If the unit sounds like the gears are grinding roughly, sometimes backing the motor through bolts out a half a turn and readjusting the front set screw will allow you to maneuver the lower housing and engage the nylon gear fully. If, however, the unit sounds normal, you can go ahead and tighten the front set screw and make sure that the motor through bolts are completely tightened. The next step is to install the high speed friction drive chuck. To do this, we may need to actually remove the vibrator rod. You can do this by disengaging the bottom part of the vibrator arm and just removing the vibrator rod. Next, we're going to insert the, drive, the rear drive chuck. The set screw should be oriented to the flat portion of the drive shaft as it comes down from the unit. If need be, you may need to turn the motor shaft to where you can access it, actually tighten it down. Again, ensuring the, uh, the flat portion is where the set screw rests. Go ahead and tighten down the set screw.
Now you can reins reins reinsert the vibrator rod and re-engage the clip, the vibrator arm. Ensuring that both drives are moving, the high speed and the slow speed. Now with our combination unit completely reinstalled and assembled, we want to go ahead and test both drives to ensure proper operation. The first drive we will check will be our slotted drive vacuum mixer. And it should, in the off position, engage its own mixer. Which it does. We'll pull back in, of course. The next thing we want to check is our friction drive. We want to make sure that that operates correctly. To do that, it will not engage automatically, so you have to switch it to the on position. Indeed operates I hope you found the information in today's video useful. If you have any other comments or concerns or questions, please contact me anytime. Thank you and have a great day.